Hey everybody, it's Mountain Mike. Thanks for joining me out on the mountain. Checking in, see what's going on in the continuation of our sawmill assembly. Today we're doing the saw head and carriage assembly. It's going to be a lengthy process. I'm probably going to break this up into several more videos. I don't want to be overly detailed with my videos, but at the same time, I want to be detailed. I'm showing all the steps and what's going on for all the people that really want to know. Um, I, I do want to do an informative video, so stick with me there. So the first thing on the list is to get into box number 10. So I'm anxious to get into this box because every time I move it, orange paint comes falling out of the ends that are no longer there because it's so beat up. And, uh, you know, I, it's just steel plates. It's not that big of a deal. But let's get into it and see what's going on there. We got this one. And I made a, an attempt at protecting it. Sort of. It, oh, yeah. I see. It, it got pretty gouged in the shipping process. Yeah, there's some more. So it had a pretty hard trip. So this is a serial number plate. And it has the LM30 serial number. This is the only thing since I've, I've gone through this or the paperwork or anything that said LM30. They have said at the factory that it is just simply a sticker change from the LM29V2 to the LM30. Because the LM29 was a misnomer, it actually cuts 30 inches, not 29. Alright, so this is your lower saw head panel and you can tell that by the oval shaped holes in it and it tells you first off that you need to elevate it about four inches off your platform whatever you're building this on so we went to our scrap pile and got us a couple two by sixes out of it that were left over from building the deck so the first thing to do once you get it up on your blocks is to make sure you have it oriented correctly and you have the cutout shapes facing towards you and you take uh, what they're referring to as your front and rear saw head spacers and you you can see that there's various hole alignment here and the same here that are going to line up for you and you just set those there okay so once you have your holes all lined up properly everything's just sitting here floating you take your top saw head panel and keeping careful of your orientation you align the various bolt holes on it and everything should match up all your holes should line up if they don't just take a screwdriver stick it down there move everything around till it does so the next thing was we got bag number five all right so let's get started we're going to start putting bolts and assembling all this together here is the contents of bag number five all laid out the nuts and bolts bag which is all this stuff to the left here uh, it has a contents list on the bag it appears to all be here so we're in good shape there and we're going to pick out the bolts and start lining them up so in the instruction manual, it does point out that there are square and round holes. The square holes, uh, of course, accepting the head of the carriage bolts and locking them in place. So it gives you direction on which way to put these bolts. And they tell you to make sure everything is flush. Both panels are nice and square to each other. And once you do that, then you tighten all the bolts together. And sandwich this piece together so when I brought my parts over yesterday I neglected to see I needed box 11 and 14 I don't know how I overlooked that well, I went ahead and grabbed everything that I could uh, <laughs> I got to get a standard size pallet here it's just some boards I threw together and it was actually a door for something else I'm just using it for a pallet at the moment anyway here is box number 14's contents because I don't know the terminology that Norwood uses for each part they don't give you a guide for that they only give you a guide for the nuts and bolts and washers and all that so until you get to the steps that require the parts it's really hard to diagnose whether you're missing parts or not you can count but they count one piece as one or two as one or you know sometimes it's 
not that simple. So be aware that it's going to be, you pretty much got to get it together to know what you got. All right, so here's box 11 contents outside of the big blade shrouds. Now things are getting messy. We're getting all sorts of parts from all sorts of boxes. The brackets came from box 11. The vertical guide blocks came from box 14. We've got nuts and bolts over here. We're fixing to open bag number three of nuts and bolts. So the next step is to take the vertical guide blocks and the guard brackets and we're going to mount them to the saw head plate. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, vertical guide blocks and guard brackets are in place. Moving on. Okay, the contents of box 9A, carriage wheel housings. Bag number four out of box 1A. And we're going to get the carriage wheels out of bag four and assemble those into the carriage wheel housings. That's the next step. So here's the contents of bag number four. The carriage wheels, we got the spacers, the bolts, nuts, 5 eighths, and that's what we're going to use to put on the carriage wheel housing. It's a mite precocious getting the carriage wheel into the housing with the spacers and all, because you have to put one on top and one on bottom. But if you just turn it on its side, lay one in there, lay it on top, and then put your other spacer on top of that, then you can just slide it into the housing. That makes it a lot easier. First one didn't go that fast. So we got the carriage wheels into the carriage wheel housing. And we're gonna put these on the track with the aid of a board and some clamps. We're gonna position them. Now let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've eyeballed this, clamped it in place with my board and two clamps, and they're saying that this will be approximately 33 and a half inches from inside to inside. So let's see what we got. Let's see. Well, I'd say that's pretty dang close right there. All right, so. Doesn't get much better than that. Now we got to put on saw head plates. That's next. So the first thing I did was put some clamps on the rails front and back so it can't move while I'm doing this. All right, so before you go lifting that in place, and we're gonna need these. be done like that all right so we have box 9b now that we need to get into now earlier i didn't point out that norwood supplied a tap so in case you encounter something that's threaded in one of these plates or something that doesn't want to pass through because of the pain or a little bit of damage you can take your tap and go ahead and clean it out and it shouldn't be an issue and that was that was good thinking so we're going to mount these to what appears to be the sawmill carriage housing. Let's give that a shot. So this thread on this one seems to be not necessarily damaged, but it's got paint and everything in it. So it looks like I'm going to need that tap after all. We now need to get into box number seven. Alrighty then. Now this is the contents of box number seven. Now we need the winch end plate and the winch frame and we're going to mount those. So we have our winch end plate which is a smaller piece in the box and it mounts here and we have the winch frame and it mounts here. And they tell you to stick a couple of bolts in this to uh, secure it 
about a half inch off of these. So we're going to do that. So the next thing we're going to install is the winch shaft cover. Alright, just remember, once you start mounting all this, it's all finger tight until we get it all mounted together and then we're going to go back and tighten all this up. That way you have room for adjustment to put the new parts on as you go. So now we have to install the front horizontal tube. Got to install it right. Okay, so now we're going to tighten the bolts on the front horizontal shaft and we've got the top and the bottom one tightened. Now we're going to add the two. Alright, so the next step is to tighten all the winch frame bolts into your horizontal bar. Then they tell you to tighten the legs down to the carriage wheel housing. So what I would do is tighten this bolt. Now I had to clamp these two pieces together to keep it in the right position. It wanted to kick up. They were fighting me. Um, I suggest you might do, do the same to make sure it goes all the way down. So I would tighten this bolt and then I would drop it down and then tighten it down here. I mean, it still took me a clamp uh, to pull it all together enough right here so you know you may have to play around with this part but this is this is a important part to get all right because this is where you start getting square I also measured between here and the top of that plate on both sides to make sure everything was in position where it needed to be so you get everything as square and right like you should. All right, so I definitely recommend that you put these three bolts in before you tighten the legs at the bottom down down here. They recommend you tighten these first for some reason. So I had a difficult time getting these three bolts in with the legs tightened down. So I had to back up. I'm not sure why they tell you to tighten the legs down at the bottom and then do this step because there is a little bit of adjustment in the legs at the lower end so you know just FYI go ahead and put these bolts in there finger tight and then tighten everything down okay so having only tightened the top one right here on your winch end plate and frame and you've finger tightened your lower leg bolts and you've finger tightened your upper leg bolts then you want to tighten everything this is when you want to tighten everything starting with these and these and then the underneath then you'll go ahead and tighten these bolts here on the winch end plate and here on the shaft cover and here and here so the next step is to go down low here and the lower side frames which are these rails here so you want to go ahead and put three bolts in each side and lock this in place now okay so we've got the bolts in the lower side frames and I was going around tightening making sure I got everything tight twisted the head off of that one see right here I've stripped that one out in there yeah, these are cheap I know nuts and bolts cost good money especially good quality ones but these are cheap for the assembly of this thing at the very least they need to give you a torque value but we're gonna go forward not happy not happy so the next step will be to tighten the vertical guide blocks, which is the black plastic there and there on both sides. And they recommend not to over tighten these. I would say with the luck I'm having, 
I'm going to take their advice. All right, so we've gotten everything tightened up so far on our carriage assembly. It's looking good. Been a little bit of a fight, but we're getting there. So the next step is to tighten up the carriage wheels. We're gonna go ahead and do that. So we're back in bag number four, getting the remaining parts out of it. So we have the four under wheels, four nuts and bolts, and then two track sweeps, which we'll install those next. Okay, when you install your under wheels, you need to make sure that they're just barely touching your track. So you wanna be able to push your track forward just a little bit to get it underneath the retainer rail. Well, hey there. So we had a little rest spot here between the transition of the two main rails. We filed that down flush. We've just installed our under wheels. And you just barely touch the underside of the track with those. So if you feel too much resistance, they may be your issue. I mean, maybe you've got those too tight. Still doesn't feel right. Okay, so I found a spot in the rail that wasn't quite level, uh, flush with each section. The retainer rail was a little bit lower than the main rail and it was causing the carriage to kind of get a pinch point between the under wheel and the carriage wheel. So it got tight right here and didn't want to roll. This joint here was a little uneven so I filed it, made it better, but it still didn't want to roll quite right. I've taken these bolts loose here, straightened this where it needs to be retighten and I think we'll be in good shape. All right, so last step in this section is the track sweepers. And there's two of those. You've got slots for four, but these go in the front. I'm assuming you could add some in the back just to help out. Now, there's a little bit of confusion. They say in in this part of the manual to saturate with oil. In the beginning of the manual, it tells you that you need kerosene and oil mixture for the track sweepers. So I'm not really sure about that. I don't have any oil right now with me to saturate these, so I'm gonna set them aside so I remember to do that. So make sure you throw me some comments down there and let me know how I'm doing. A like and subscribe is awesome. We sure appreciate it. It helps our channel grow and our videos get shared more. Make sure you join me on my next video and check out the rest of this sawmill assembly. I'm going to have a couple more videos to go with this. So uh, stay strong. Stay with me. It's a long project. I get it. You know, I, I am trying to make this uh, as short and sweet and to the point as possible. I want y'all to experience what I'm experiencing as a, you know, a first time sawmill assembler. So I hope y'all enjoy the videos. Well, I'm Mountain Mike, out on the mountain. I appreciate y'all checking in on me, watching the video. Till next time.